Hello everybody and welcome to episode 2 of Reacting to Seahawks Hot Takes. Today we'll once again be looking at Seahawks.home on Instagram, so make sure you click the link in the description and go follow him there. Show him some support for all these great takes that he's had. This might be the last time we see Seahawks.home because he does not have any more takes after this, so unless he posts some more, this might be the last time we see Seahawks.home on this show. But before we get into the show today, I have some pretty important things to do. So if some of you have been in the comment section recently, you will know that I did lose a good amount of my Seahawks gear. However, I went searching yesterday, that's why there was no upload, and I found some gear. I found some of my Seahawks gear. I found a very cool Marshawn Lynch jersey that I have right over there that I'm going to be putting right up here right now. And there it is. There it is on the wall. It's put up pretty poorly, and it's a bit old and wrinkled, but... We live with it. It looks really cool. It's Marshawn Lynch, and I, uh, I'm i glad that we get to put something on the wall to spice it up. But today, real quick, I just want to uh, do one of the suggestions from the last videos. In the last video, one of the people saw that I mentioned that I was the next Bob Ross, and uh, he told me that I should draw the Seahawks logo. And um, today, I'm going to be trying to do that, and I'm going to put it somewhere right up here. And um, let's just see how that goes. You know, I'm going to draw from scratch and just try my best. Hopefully, it turns out well. All right, and there we go. Uh, <laughs> here's my art. It's uh, it's really good. Um, I, I, I tried my best. Um, maybe, maybe uh, could have been better. Maybe I should have used a reference, but I think um, I, I, I did an all right job with what I had. And um, now it's going to go somewhere, uh, let's just say right, right there. You can see the abomination in the camera, and there we go. The wall has now got some spice. And in the next video, there might be a little bit more spice added, so make sure you stay tuned for that because uh, this background tomorrow or the, whenever the next video comes out is going to be nice. And for the first hot take of the day from Seahawks.home, we have Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde will both rush for 1,000 yards this season. Now, this is a hot take. Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde did both surpass 1,000 yards last season, but will they be able to get it done together on the same team? Now, honestly, I don't see this one happening whatsoever. Now, this is a hot take. It definitely could happen if they're given equal opportunities. But I think Chris Carson has definitely solidified his spot as the number one running back on the team. Carlos Hyde will definitely be a number two. And I think Chris Carson will be a workhorse this year. I think he's going to be getting a lot of touches, a lot of snaps. I think Carlos Hyde is just an insurance option. And once Rashad Penny comes back, probably week six because he'll be on the PUP list. I think Carlos Hyde gets relinquished back down to a running back three slot. But honestly, if this does happen, that would be baffling because Rashad Penny will probably come back midseason and probably do very well because he is definitely a good change of pace. Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde are both big power back options. Chris Carson has gotten a little bit of elusiveness thrown into his game, but Carlos Hyde is definitely more of a power back when it comes down to it. So two power backs, one after another. Having Rashad Penny come in and kind of go towards the elusive backside and switch it up will definitely be a big help midway through the season if he does end up being put on the PUP list. So for the first hot take of the day, I honestly don't see this one happening, but let's just get right into hot take number two. And coming in for the second hot take of the day from Seahawks.home, Carlos Hyde becomes Seattle's top running back. Now this is a very hot take. This take is on fire. This take is super hot because I do not see this happening at all. First take, I don't think that it happens, but this one, I have zero confidence that this will happen whatsoever. I think Chris Carson, like I said in the first hot take, has solidified his spot as the number one running back in Seattle, and I don't see Carlos Hyde coming in and taking that spot. Obviously, there's a chance that Chris Carson can get injured, and uh, Carlos Hyde takes that spot before Rashad Penny comes back from the PUP list if he is put on that list, but... uh if Chris Carson doesn't get injured, I see zero chance that Carlos Hyde takes that number one spot. I think Chris Carson has earned the respect from the Seahawks organization, and he definitely deserves it. And I think after this season, when his contract is up and he's in line for an extension, I think he's going to be given it by the Seahawks. And um, I think that he will be the Seahawks number one running back for years to come. But that's just me. A lot of people really don't like Chris Carson. They think Rashad Penny is a much better option. I really do like Chris Carson. I think he fits Seattle's uh, you know, fan base very well. I think he fits the power run option very well for the Seahawks. And um, Rashad Penny, he's definitely a great one-two punch with Chris Carson. I think they work very well together with the power and some elusiveness of Chris Carson and then the elusiveness of Rashad Penny. But 
going back to Carlos Hyde, I think that he's definitely a good option coming in this year to be a number two running back and then eventually a number three once Rashad Penny comes back. But I do not think that he comes in and takes the number one spot from Chris Carson. I think Chris Carson is definitely the running back for Seattle for years to come. And now for the third hot take of the day from Seahawks.home, we have Marquise Blair becomes a starting safety and has an impressive year. Now this honestly is a take that I can 100% agree with, I can get behind. I think that Bradley McDougal, he could definitely start one more year this year, but his contract I believe is up after this year and there are a lot of trades that the Seahawks could potentially make that they could throw Bradley McDougal in. Now honestly, me myself personally, I would love to see Marquise Blair get more opportunities. I've heard that he's been working out with Cam Chancellor, a great player from the Legion of Boom days, and if Marquise Blair can even get some of that high intensity, big hits, big playmaking ability from Cam Chancellor, my God, I would love to see him get all the snaps he can possibly get. And I believe that if he does become the starting safety, he will impress a lot of people. I think Marquise Blair, he didn't really show out too well in the opportunities he had in his rookie year. I think he made some big plays, but he definitely let up some big plays as well. And I think that with a year under his belt, if he gets the opportunity to start at safety this year, he'll definitely impress a lot of people. And honestly, this take, I believe, is not that hot of a take. I think it's a hot take saying that Marquise Blair will become the starter, but I think that it's a pretty safe bet that if he does become the starter, he'll have a very impressive year because with the help of Cam Chancellor and with just the Seahawks organization behind him, they have a very good secondary class around them. They have Shaquille Griffin. They have Quentin Dunbar. They have Ugo Amadi. So there are definitely a lot of pieces in place to help Marquise Blair if he does make some mistakes. You also have Quandre Diggs who can make up for any mistakes Marquise Blair could have and also probably has been helping him this offseason. So really, the secondary Seattle, I think Marquise Blair could be put into that. He might make some big mistakes, but he'll probably make some big plays too. And honestly, if he just plays well enough as a safety, if he plays average, everyone around him seems like very good options if they play up to expectations. So if Marquise Blair does become the starter, I think that the Seahawks secondary definitely will be a little bit worse because uh, Bradley McDougal is definitely a safer option. He has more experience, but Marquise Blair in a couple years will definitely be a very good safety, I believe, if he continues to grow and if he gets the opportunities that uh, a lot of Seahawks fans wants to see him have. And now coming in at our fourth and final slot of the day for the hot takes from Seahawks.home, we have Jaron Reed has a defensive player of the year type season. Now, Jaron Reed, he definitely had a slow year last year. He had some good run-stopping plays, but he didn't get to the quarterback too much. The year before that, though, in 2018, he had a great season with 10 and a half sacks and 12 tackles for loss. So if he can get back to those kind of numbers, that would be great to see for the Seahawks defense this year. The Seahawks definitely need a lot of help when it comes to the pass rush. And if Jaron Reed could play anywhere like that, that would be absolutely amazing, especially since we brought in Bruce Irvin. We've got some good young options in Darrell Taylor and Alton Robinson. And honestly, I believe that the Seahawks could be a very good all-around defense if all players play up to expectations, which definitely is, uh, there's a possibility that it doesn't happen. Um, you know, expectations are one thing. How a player produces is another thing. But if players play anywhere near the expectations that people have for them, I think that the Seahawks defense could be much better than it was last year and probably one of the best that it's been since the Legion of Boom days. But honestly, Jaron Reed, Defensive Player of the Year type season, I could see it happening. If he goes back to that 10 and a half sack, 12 tackle for loss, maybe he keeps the 10 sacks, brings the tackles for loss up to maybe a 20, maybe a 25. I don't think he'll be Defensive Player of the Year because, I mean, there's always Aaron Donald. I don't think that anyone will take him over when it comes to Defensive Player of the Year. But, um... Jaron Reed, I think that there definitely is a possibility that if he gets back to that 10 sack range, if he gets over 20 tackles for loss, he could make a huge impact for Seattle. And I think he just got signed to an extension this last year. So he's definitely got something to prove since he's making some money now. So um, if he does get back to the way of getting those 10 sacks and gets over 20 tackles for loss, like I've said about six different times already, I'd love to see it. And I think it could make a huge impact for the Seahawks pass rush and just in general, the Seahawks defense. And with that, that is going to be the end of this episode of reacting to Seahawks hot takes. Do you have any hot takes that you think should be in this video? If you do, make sure you leave them in the comments below. I'll be doing a little community post asking for some more hot takes, seeing if anyone has some bold hot takes that they want to throw out. So make sure you stay on the lookout for that if you have any submissions that you want to put out. But with that, that's going to be it for this video. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a great day.